Hey again, and welcome back. Today I want to talk about these guys. These are DigiSpark microcontrollers. Basically uh, ATtiny85 on a development board. And these things can be had on eBay if you're an American for about a dollar a piece. So this is like by far the cheapest Arduino-y type thing that you can buy. And if you only need six pins and limited memory, then it's actually perfect for small installations. Like, this guy is not even an inch in length. It's very, very small. There's two versions, but um, apparently they work the same. I haven't used this one yet. It does come with one catch, though, is that you have to install additional drivers and an additional board into your uh, Arduino software. And I've had to reformat my computer recently and so I need to redo the process. Since I need to redo the process, I figure it's the perfect time to show you how to do it. Let's head over to the computer and I'll show you how. First things first, all the links that will be talked about in this video are in the description below. And the first thing I would do is download the Arduino IDE. So if you have Windows, if you have the Windows 10 App Store over here, Linux over here, just install that as you would normally. I'll assume that you've already done this so we can move on. From there you need to go over here. This is the Digistump wiki and Digistump is the company who makes the DigiSparks and so you have to download the drivers which are right here. Again link in the description below. I'm just going to save this open up my downloads folder here and then here is the download so I'm going to extract that here put it to digistump drivers and then this one here I have a 64-bit uh, install of Windows so I'm gonna have to install this one so continue next um, yeah always trust that's fine install Make sure all these are checked off and finish. Now that should be it, but I will say it's best to connect an Arduino onto your system. One of the digi stumps, just plug it in because it's going to want to install the drivers for the bootloader. It's like setting it up for the first time. It just helps because when you want to upload a uh, sketch to it, it won't like interrupt your flow. Alright, so the next step is we're going to have to open the Arduino interface. There it is there. And now you're going to have to go to File and Preferences. And you're going to want to go down here where it says Additional Board Manager URLs. And you're going to want to go back onto that Digisp DigiSpark uh, wiki and pick up this URL here, copy it, and then paste it into there. And click OK. Then you're going to want to go up here to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, up here of the type, Contributed, and then you're going to want to get the Digistump AVR boards by Digistump. Install this. Shouldn't take too long. It's just downloading and installing. Okay, we're going to close this. And at this point, it would be a good idea to restart your computer. Now that your computer is restarted, we can try to program a DigiSpark to see if it works. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go up here to Tools and change our board to our DigiSpark. So most of the DigiSparks you'll pick up will be this one, the default 16.5 megahertz. Now the COM port doesn't really matter because I believe the drivers will actually go search for a device once you start the upload process. The programmer, however, you have to change to Micronucleus. And this Micronucleus didn't have to be used before. I remember that I didn't have to use that before, but now it does. 
apparently. So I'm going to go File, Examples, and you see here you have some Digispark stuff. So here's a Digispark example, and we'll click the Start. So here we go. We have the basic Digispark Blink software, but your Digispark will probably come with this loaded up default from the factory. So I want to change this a little bit so that we know that it's functioning. So I'm probably going to make it flash on for half a second and then stay off for one and a half seconds just to make sure that we're aware that the software we put on is the new software and not what came default with your DigiSpark. So now you don't need the DigiSpark plugged in. You just click Upload. And you see down there, it says Plug in device now. We'll time out in 60 seconds. Now is the time to plug in your DigiSpark. Plugged it in now. We'll see if it catches it. Running 100% complete. Micronucleus done. Thank you. So now let's go back to the bench and make sure that worked. So here we are back at the workbench and this guy is the one I just programmed. So I'm going to plug this in by its USB and if the LED blinks on for half a second and off for a second and a half then we'll know this has properly been programmed. So there's a little short flash and there we go, second and a half it stays off. So that's all you really need. Now you can just write your software as usual. Um, taking care of the pin numbering. They're numbered 0 through 5, so there's six pins you can use. And in future videos, we're going to use these in projects. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing. If not, well, just tell me why in the description below. But as always, thanks for watching.